Hello and welcome. My name is Tracy Montgomery. I am the self-sabotage queen and I am tasking myself with helping you end your own personal self-sabotage cycle. So today's topic is about the link, if there is a link, between our mindset and our emotions and how we can control our state of mind. So is there genuinely a link between your mindset and emotions? And if so, can you learn to control your state of mind? If you could do this, you would be practically unstoppable. So many people underestimate the actual power and strength and influence the mind can have on our emotions and how we actually behave. So let me talk you through some examples and show you how powerful the mind can actually be. So if we talk about our emotions and how we can control our strength, there were back in history a group of Norse fighters known as the Berserkers. Now, the berserkers were known to get into what they described as being a berserker rage. Now, in this rage, they had a fit of anger and they would take this onto the battlefield and this would leave them with incredible extra strength. So they were revered, they were basically unstoppable and they terrified everyone around them. There have been accounts in recent history of um, other humans, normal human beings, undergoing extreme uh, bouts of strength. Mothers lifting up cars off their toddlers. Um, There was a recent one of um, twins in, I think it was Florida, and the one was attacked by an alligator and the other one helped fight the alligator off her twin. All of these sort of things are to do with us tapping in to our emotions and utilising our strengths. So how does this happen? When we are under extreme stress, our hormones go into an overdrive and we get a massive surge, a massive release of testosterone, adrenaline and cortisol. So these hormones help to increase our heart rate, our focus, our awareness and our muscle capabilities. So we have to take into account what those capabilities are though. Physically, our physicality only allows, even with this adrenaline surge, for a 30% increase in our muscle capabilities. Athletes, trained athletes, could tone this a little bit more so that they could have an increased muscle capacity of up to 50%. If we were to imagine a total muscle surge, we um, would have an extreme reaction. So if we think back to, um, if we've watched any of the movies when somebody um, touches a wire, they get an electric shock and they get thrown across the room. What is happening is their muscles are all contracting and they're all pinging at the same time. And this is what throws the person across the room. Now, there's a number of reasons why we don't actually want this to happen all the time. Reason one, when you're thrown across a room and you hit a wall, it can have consequences to your body hitting the wall, broken bones, broken ligaments, the broken muscle itself. But also this massive, huge surge of energy has a consequence afterwards and you end up with a depleted energy um, source. So you become fatigued. So once you've had this big energy surge, you're going to be fatigued afterwards. So if you watch um, marathon races, at the end of marathon races, the um, 
we often see people staggering to the finish line because their energy reserves are becoming depleted because they have overused what their supplies are. But we can utilize that. So we've just discussed how you can utilize this when you are um, a performing athlete. You can utilize it with things like when you go up on stage. So stage fright, that is a form where we are taking our mindset. We are using the adrenaline surge, the cortisol surge, and we are helping ourselves when we go out on stage to perform or to speak. But there is another usable state that we can utilize when we have these hormonal surges and that is the flow state. This is when we have a calming effect on ourselves and we get ourselves into this um, continual bliss state where we cut out the rest of the world and we are so focused on what we are actually doing that nothing can come into us. So there are times where we get into this flow state where we act instinctively and we just do. So examples are like if you open an overflowing cupboard, everything falls out and you just catch things. There are useful ways of utilising this um, flow state So when people start writing, you hear of this writer's block or you hear of this, I had to keep writing until. They are the extreme. So the flow state is when they keep writing until everything comes out. So the the overthinking has gone and it's just all coming out. It's all flowing. That can be seen when you have a group of musicians that are jamming together and one of them starts with a chord and does a little riff and then someone else joins in and before you know it they've been jamming for three four hours and they've just gone continuously with the creativity flow so this creativity flow is obviously a useful flow because we can utilize it for our productivity So this emotion, it can, this creativity flow, it can make us um, focus for a short amount of time, but it also, again, can fatigue us at the end of it. So we have to be aware of the fact that we can become fatigued at the end of it. We can also use this state of flow to help with our social skills. We can... Like, for instance, me coming here to do a video towards, I don't know how many people who are going to see me in this state. It can create for me a um, adrenaline rush as I start. I can do three, two, one and start. And once I get going, that's it. You have to keep going because the creativity has started. You can then... As you can see, I have then controlled it. So I have controlled what has happened once I have switched live or switched go, record, whichever it's called, onto the camera. So I have partially controlled that. We can then take this and we can start utilising it to control other emotions. So things like when we have the anger trigger, we can think about that is a surge. We can think about things that we can do to try and prevent this and control it. So if we think about the scenario of when you're going like I did, just going onto camera or when you're going up on stage, you can do what we call controlled breathing. So controlled breathing is when you take deep breaths, You hold them in for a count. It can be a count of four, can be a count of five. It's not too long, but you hold it in, you centre and then you slowly let it out again for a count of four or five. You can increase this. And this is known as a form of cognitive behaviour therapy. There are various methods. We haven't got time to go into those today 
of cognitive behavioural therapy that can stop your emotions and the way that you then behave becoming out of control. So there are certain things that you can consider and that you can look at to see when you could use these sort of strategies to try and um, prevent them going out of control, for want of another word. So you can look at what points or what triggers make you stressed. You can put the, you can look at what scenarios create your anxieties. You can look at how much you expect of yourself or how much you expect of others and their behaviour. There are lots of things that you can look at to see where you are triggered and whether you need to stop, think about what you can do to prevent the emotions becoming out of control or the emotions being channeled and how that can make you more productive. So for more information on this, there is a more in-depth blog. I will leave a link below. And if you've enjoyed this information from today, please subscribe to my channel and ting the bell. And I will speak to you soon. Bye for now.